Whoever thinks talk is cheap did not pay my daughter's last phone bill. I'm just telling you. Have you ever typed a message then sent it to the wrong person? I remember well the day a text from my son rattled its way into my phone. It began, hey darling, followed by a lovey-dovey message I shall not repeat. I laughed it up and he still can't live it down. <laughs> of course, he's thankful that it came to me rather than an old high school teacher or, or one of his aunts. But sometimes the results of a misdirected text are less humorous. Like the one from a lady who accidentally sent a text to her boss, Valerie, it said, how angry would Val be if she knew I was on the beach sipping pina colada today? <laughs> oh, wow. To answer her question, Val was very angry indeed. Jenny received this from her dad. Jenny's rabbit died last night, so we went to the pet store and bought an almost identical one. My wife and I are wondering if she's going to notice. Jenny replied, Dad, you could have told me the truth. By the way, I would have noticed. And Jenny is right. Hey, Dad, come on, tell the truth. Maya received this text from her mom. Matt. Keep a secret. Be here by 8 p.m. tomorrow. Joey is going to ask Maya to marry him. I am so terribly excited. Don't be late. Maya replied, wow, mom, you texted that to me. Joey is going to ask me to marry him tomorrow. I think you just ruined the greatest surprise of my life. Well, I hope mom and daughter sort it out. It'll be okay. My favorite came from Matt, who works at a vascular lab. He wrote, hey, Dr. Park, this is Matt. I have an outpatient here with an external iliac occlusion with cold foot pain and numbness that started three days ago. What should I do? And this came back. Hi, this is Hannah. I think you have the wrong number, but I googled it and I'm pretty sure you need to put a stent in her left radial artery. Best of luck, Matt. Matt later texted this to Hannah. She ended up getting a stent. Took about three hours longer for trained medical professionals to figure out what took you three minutes. Good job. Hannah replied, y'all hiring? <laughs> My friend Al Bernier knows a little about sending messages to the wrong person. He's in Winnipeg. Al is a realtor and he has many of his colleagues' numbers in his phone for convenience. His wife's name is entered as Lore, and next in line is another realtor named Lauren. Al is one of those guys who often texts his wife sweet nothings, but one day, while in a rush, he accidentally texted Lauren a message filled with sweet somethings. Al says, as soon as I hit send, I realized the error, so I quickly phoned Lauren to explain. She got a good chuckle from it and was also quite impressed that I was still sending love notes to my wife after 30 years of marriage. Way to go. Well, good for you, Al. Keep it up, man. Just get the number right, would you? You know, one of the amazing things about the Bible is that when we open this ancient text, the words are always meant for us. We're not reading someone else's mail. God's word speaks to us now, and it's more current than last night's news. Today, I'm nursing a fever and feeling weak as a malnourished kitten. And these words from Psalm 73 jumped out at me, whom have I in heaven but you? And I desire no one on earth as much as you. My health fails, my spirits droop, yet God remains. He is the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Isn't that great? Whatever you're up against today, that text was for you too. God's promises are fresh, they're timely, they're remarkably current. Unlike the text Sarah Phillips received from her husband's friend, Good morning, beautiful. I can't wait to hold you in my arms. <laughs> Needless to say, the poor guy meant it for his own wife. Hey, I just want to thank you because every time you push the subscribe button, something really cool happens to me. And so would you just push it just now? Thank you. Oh, pizza. Thank you. Excellent. Pepperoni.